Hey guys, um, it's Sunday morning here and it's real dreary. Um, I only have one day left with Bella and Cash here, so what I thought I would do is just sit down and kind of make a case study video for you guys where I could go over everything from the very beginning, from me getting the client to analyzing the dogs to creating an action plan and then implementing it. Um, I had one of my students tell me that that was something that he was kind of missing and something that he would really like to know more about. So I thought it would be good for everybody. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. So to start off, how um, I found these clients, because I don't really advertise my training anymore. So most of the clients that I work with end up being word of mouth. Um, most typically, the, the dogs that I get are other trainer failures, meaning that um, you know, they went to another trainer for help and maybe that trainer didn't have the skills or the expertise to be able to help that dog. So they ended up seeking help elsewhere and then they got recommended to me somehow. Um, so that's what happened with these guys. Um, they had tried to work with another trainer. The other trainer just didn't have the skills to help them. Uh, even recommended just getting rid of one of their dogs. That was pretty much their solution to most of their issues that they were having. And um, they didn't really like that answer. So uh, they came to work with me. Um, so most of the complaints that they had with these guys were very typical six month old German Shepherd issues, right? Um, uh, their main complaints were that Cash always goes after Bella and tries to attack Bella. Um, specifically if somebody else is giving her attention and not him. Um, he will go out and find trouble the very second that he's not being stimulated or you're not paying attention to him, most generally speaking in the form of counter surfing and um, chewing. He's definitely a big chewer. Um, they also attack the mop, broom, shovel, spray bottles, vacuum, pretty much anything that moves and makes a noise, they're going to go after it and try to attack it. Um, Bella jumps on people, they eat poop. Um, and yeah, so that was pretty much like the major issues that they were having. Obviously, like some help with the obedience stuff would be nice. And that's always a given for me. Um, I don't, when I'm talking to clients about what they want out of their board and train, I'm never going to bring up obedience because obedience is something that I'm going to work on no matter what. It's a given. So, um, I don't, I don't care about that. What I want to know is what behaviors are going on in your home that are making your dog not great to be around or like, you know, that are affecting your lifestyle and your life in a negative way. That's what I want to know. Um, because the basic obedience is always going to be a given. So now that we kind of know what the issues are, um, and what they are hoping to accomplish through, Hey, speak of the devil, try and choose something right now. Um, so hi cash. Hi Bella. Whatever you have, leave it, please. Thank you. So now that we have an idea of what the problems are and what the clients are really hoping to accomplish during their training, we have a couple things that we need to figure out. One, where the behaviors are coming from. Okay, so the thing about working with two dogs at the same time, especially when they're litter mates, is that it's important you can still look at the dogs as individuals, okay? Because with Cash, most of his behaviors are coming from a lack of stimulation. He's a working dog, he has an extremely high work drive, and he wants to be doing something constructive all the time. If you don't give him something to do, he will go find it. Um, whereas with Bella, most of her issues that she have are overexcitement and prey drive. That's why she goes after like the broom, mob, rags, um, she really honestly like she has much better self-control um than cash by means of like not going out and seeking self-rewarding behaviors as much she doesn't really do that um most of hers are prey driven so knowing those two things we know that most of cash's behaviors are coming from something that he finds self-rewarding in that moment and bella's aren't really they're prey driven so we're not going to attack them in the same way while we're working with them. Um, second, what kind of training do they respond to? 
this is really important because, um, you know, as much as we would like to do everything with positive reinforcement, there's just a lot of behaviors that you cannot attack like that. Um, a good rule of thumb is that if it is a self-rewarding behavior, positive reinforcement probably isn't going to fix it. Especially if you have dogs like this, that are too smart for their own good and they can figure out that not only that behavior is self-rewarding to them, but the second that you tell them to stop, they're going to get another reward. So they're just bouncing back and forth between rewards. Um, a perfect example of this would be when I was working with the vacuum and desensitizing them to the vacuum at first, or no, I'm sorry, it was the, the broom. So at first, Bella was the one that was really going after it and attacking it. And we were doing, and Cash was just kind of hanging out. He wasn't really doing anything. Well, then he was watching Bella go about the training and, you know, each time she would leave it or I would give her that uh -uh, and she would back off from it and I was rewarding her. He, by watching her, figured out that if he went after the broom and then left it when I told him to, that he would get a reward. So literally, then he started going after it and then immediately coming up to my hands and looking for that reward. And I was like, okay. So obviously this is not going to work for him because it's self-rewarding and he knows it. So it's a reward, 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 reward. With Bella, I was able to use positive reinforcement and like the leave it in the uh-uh to get her to quit going after it. With Cash, I had to make it unrewarding for him in order for him to stop because he thought that stopping, like doing that bad behavior was going to get him a reward as long as he stopped. So... You can't attack it like that because otherwise they're just going to start doing that behavior more to get the reward when you tell them not to. Um, and so with Cash, I had to make all of his behaviors that were unsavory unrewarding to him because that's the only reason why he's doing them. Um, three, how do they impact one another's training? So just like what I was just talking about, they kind of feed off each other and they learn from one another as they're watching it happen especially when we're dealing with litter mates and especially when they're super intelligent litter mates like these two, you have to be on your game all the time because they're constantly watching and they're constantly learning from one another and what the other one is doing. So if you let one of them get away with something or if you teach one of them cash, thank you. I see him wandering off trying to find trouble right now. Um, good boy, good boy. We can't go get in trouble. Yeah, he's a good boy. Um, so, again, these two, another thing that impacts their training is that, like, Cash, for example, the second that he doesn't get his way, he wants to go and attack Bella. Um, and that's not okay, right? Because, like, he can't just direct all of that frustration or whatever onto her. So we had to kind of target that. Also, they team up with one another. So like if one of them wants to do something, uh, a lot of times the other one is going to kind of come in for backup to kind of give them that like, yeah, yeah, it's okay. So it does kind of make it a little bit more difficult because you're managing both of their behavior simultaneously. Um, four would be, how are we going to work with them while while attacking as many things as possible at once um, and what is going to be the most beneficial for all of the issues that they're having. So um, for these two specifically kind of with cash, leave it, come here. Good boy. Thank you. So for these two specifically, um, we worked a lot on patience, impulse control, and leave it. Now, obviously there's like a thousand different ways that you can work on those things, but those were where we put the heaviest of focuses on because, you know, especially if we're talking about, you know, Pel Bella's prey drive and just wanting to go, 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 um, we need to have a leave it so that we can call her off of it. Um, and we also need to kind of have that impulse control because like we need her to know that just because she wants to do something doesn't mean she's going to. Um, and the same with Cash, like he is very defiant. Like when he decides that he's going to do something, he's going to try and try and try and try and try. He's very, very persistent. So you have to stay on him all the time. Otherwise, 
he's going to go and find something unsavory to do. Um, even right now, because I've told him to leave that stuff over there several times, he's starting to go after Bella. Um, hey, be nice. Thank you. Be nice. Um, that's another one that we've been working on a lot is being nice. Um, Bella has a habit of wanting to nip people in the face when she gets really excited. So like be nice, no teeth is a big one. And I've been using that for cash towards Bella and Bella towards everyone and everything else. So the be nice, no teeth. Um, so what I determined is that, so after like taking all of those things into consideration, in addition to all the things that the owners wanted to do, was that obviously I was going to put a high focus on patience, leave it, learning to be okay, even when nothing's going on, um, and exposure. Like they haven't had too much exposure, but, and they were lacking confidence for sure. So like, you know, getting to be around other dogs and getting to explore new areas and new people and all that stuff, it's very good for them. Um, again, German Shepherds, like they tend to require a lot of stimulation and the more that you can expose them to the more stimulation that they're getting everything that you can show them and everything that you can let them experience is just like going to help with their confidence and it's also going to help with like their brains because um i mean just like with little kids you take them new places they're exhausted at the end of the day same rule applies for puppies um two um you cannot let them win ever um I think that is something that they have experienced a lot in the past is that they win because they're both so persistent and then they gang up, right? So it's one thing to have one really persistent dog, but then when you have two of them and they're ganging up on you, it can be really hard to stay strong and like ignore it and like force them to give you those nice calm behaviors. But you have to because every single time that you let them win, they're figuring out that listening is an option and we need them to know that it is not. Um, three, training needs to occur together because uh, they need to be able to be good when they're together, not just when they're separate. And I know that that's a little a little different than pretty much everything you've ever heard about litter mate training. And this is just kind of my own personal philosophy on litter mate training. But unless the owner is actually going to get rid of one of the dogs it really doesn't matter if they can behave well separately they need to be able to behave well together so a lot of my training is going to occur with both of them at the same time and managing their behavior simultaneously around each other especially with litter mates are feeding off of one another they want what the other one has they whatever blah 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 so we need to teach them how to be respectful and kind to one another, not just the other people around them. So it's kind of like micromanaging to the T. Like it's, it's, it's a little ridiculous, but that's what you have to do because unless you're expecting the owner to always work with these dogs separately or always give them separate attention, which let's be honest, highly unlikely, okay? Especially dogs like this that require a lot of stimulation it would, it would be a full-time job and then some to think that you're going to give them each the individual attention that they need to give them as much stimulation. No, they have to learn how to work together and side by side and they have to learn how to be able to control their emotions when the other one is present. Otherwise, they're never going to be able to live harmoniously within the home. Um, again, that's just my personal philosophy, but it has been very, very successful for me. Um, for the self-rewarding behaviors have to be made unrewarding. Um, they're just too smart for the positive reinforcement, right? Again, like I was talking about earlier with cash, the reward, 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 reward. We have to make it unrewarding for them. Um, and this doesn't always mean, you know, obviously I'm not like beating them or spanking them or whatever, but we do have to make it unrewarding. One thing I will say with these two is because they are litter mates and because they are so rough with each other all the time anyways, that's what they respond the best to. Um, and when you already have a litter mate in this situation where they're constantly at one another and going at one another and stuff like that, sometimes the best way to communicate with them is the way another litter mate would or the way that their mom would. And you have to kind of let them know like, no, 
you have to stop or like, no, you have to listen. And again, as a trainer, it's not my job to be their best friend. It's not my job for them to like leave wishing that I was their owner or anything like that. Like my job as the trainer is to make sure that these dogs can go home and live a happy long life with their owners. So, um, while they're here, I am trying to essentially micromanage them. I get tired of the sound of my own voice because the more you micromanage it, A, the more you're going to be able to deter any bad behaviors from happening. B, the more you're going to be able to reward them for those nice behaviors that you like. I walk around my house all day and every single time I see them just laying down relaxing, good boy, good girl, Bella, so nice, so kind. Every single time I see them interact with somebody or specifically Bella, if I see her interact and not use her teeth or not snap at all, it's good girl, so nice. Um, no teeth, no teeth, good girl. And they get it. Like they're, they're understanding it. And like, um, you know, the more you can prevent the bad behaviors from happening and the more you can reward them, the better, because they're seeing that that nice calm behavior where they're just hanging out, being part of the group, but they're not necessarily doing anything as they find out that that is just as rewarding to them as going out and seeking these other self rewarding behaviors, the better off they're going to be. Um, the first day or so that they were here, they really didn't settle at all. I mean, they were doing something every second of the day. They're beep bopping around looking for stuff. Now, um, Bella, for the most part, just settles with us. Um, she's down to just chill. Yes, she loves to work and yes, she loves to play and all that stuff. But when it's time to chill, she'll just chill. Cash has gotten 10 times better about it. Um... Yes, a lot of times he will redirect to a chew bone, but that's great. I'm never going to stop a dog from chewing. Um, but he's finally like actually settling and figuring out that sometimes it's okay to just do nothing. Um, so yeah, lots of micromanagement, but it's definitely worth it because they have made leagues and leagues and leagues of progress. Um, something that I want you guys to consider when you're working with board and trained dogs is that if you try to do everything the way that they teach, um, where, you know, like you're taking them through like all four stages of the training and this, that, and the other and blah, 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 you're never going to get anywhere. Okay. Um, you're never going to accomplish the goals that you have for that dog because you have to be smart and you have to figure out how you're going to work multiple things at the same time and progress them through that training. So, a really good example of that is like when I'm loose leash walking, for example. I'm not just loose leash walking. I'm working on uh, stimulus control. I'm working on um, not winning, like not just allowing them to do whatever they want, whenever they want. Um, I'm forcing them to redirect to me every single time. Um, same as with when I'm working on like um, their retrieving and I'm making them sit and wait before I throw the ball. I'm working their basic obedience simultaneously while I'm working on that stimulus control, same as when I'm working on leave it, so on and so forth, right? I'm still giving them those alternate behaviors to perform, so they're still getting that a lot of obedience work, even outside of the lessons that I did where I'm focusing strictly on obedience work. Now, I'll be honest, when I'm creating my training plans, specifically when I have dogs like this, where there's predominantly behavioral issues that are affecting them. Um, I don't put a super, super strong focus on just doing lessons where we're doing just obedience. Um, yes, I think that obedience is important, but what I think is even more important is being able to actually live happily in your home with your dog. Um, and once a lot of those problem behaviors are gone, the obedience stuff is very, very fast and it's very easy, especially with dogs that are this smart. So the more we can work on their, um, you know, just excitability and their want to go after everything and everything like that, the better off they're going to be and the easier obedience is going to be anyways. So yes, I do put a focus on that, but not as much as I do a lot of the other stuff because those behaviors are what are going to deter your training later um, and also create a bad home environment. So, um, so yeah, so that's pretty much, 
just kind of a little synopsis of where they came from, mm -hmm. what the issues were. Hey, what I went through to determine what how I wanted to work with them and kind of how I went about creating that training plan. Um, there's some more videos that are going to be attached like down below um all of those videos are examples of stuff of lessons that i did with them and ways that i worked with them um there's you know a couple different videos most of them are revolving around like the exposure and stimulus control and leave it and stuff like that but um i think sometimes those are the hardest skills that people have progressing so i wanted to make sure i did some videos on those obviously if you guys have any questions about anything i said please feel free to reach out, but otherwise, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll talk to you soon.